angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events fulfilling biblical prophecy, eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting edge science and technology, conspiracy, discovery, special investigative reports. Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. We're living in unprecedented times when technology is changing faster than we can keep up with it. Welcome to Skywatch TV, I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining me in studio is the president and CEO of MillionKids.org. She's director of development for Rafa House International, a ministry that saves children from around the world from human trafficking. And she's the outreach coordinator for the Riverside County, California, Human Tra Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. Uh, the author of the book, Seduced, the Grooming of America's Teenagers, uh, Opal Singleton. Opal, Hi. Um, since the beginning of the year, you say four new technologies that are changing the way human trafficking operates, making it easier for them to get away with their crimes? Yeah, there's some new technologies that are coming out that, uh, quite frankly, I'm very, very concerned about. Um, in case your audience doesn't know this, I work in a world of human trafficking, and uh, I look at every human trafficking case in America every day and every child pornography case. Mm. And I've been doing that for several years, so I'm deeply ingrained in how predators operate, how they recruit our kids. And uh, so I've been studying this, and of course technologies and apps change and like that. But there are four technologies that began since January that just really concern me. I think that you're probably not going to see the effect of these for about 12 to 18 months, but when they do, they're going to be very powerful. And, uh, and I think people need to understand it. The first one that got my attention was Facebook. Now, you know, all of us are on it. They have some incredible number of users around the world. But for whatever reason, they have decided they're going to open a legitimate site in the dark web. Hmm. Now, let me kind of explain what that means. For people that, that don't follow technology, you and I live in, let's say, let's say the internet's a bucket of water and that we're living in the top 75%. Actually, there's some thought that we're living in the top 3% and the dark web is the bottom 97%. But, hmm. but for illustration, we'll say we live in the top 75%. That's where Google and Chrome and Bing, and they can scan all that. They use their search engines and that's how it's all sorted and that's where we live. The bottom 25% is called, well, you have the deep web, which is where government works and uh, large corporations and like that. And below that, you have the dark web. And nobody really knows how big it is, but it's basically uncharted territory that's not uh, controlled by search engines. Mm -hmm. And so for many years since this has happened, they've had child pornographers, uh, the Mexican drug cartel, money launders, right, uh, ISIS, and like that. And big, they're yeah. living in there. And it's always been kind of unorthodox. You don't go in unless you're invited, unless you know somebody who's in those kinds of illicit business. Well, all of a sudden, Facebook has announced they're opening a legitimate site in this dark web. So that, that was a bit scary. I thought, what are they doing and why would they do that? Well, then almost simultaneously, they introduced the fact that they had Facebook Live, Facebook Live Streaming. And uh, I use it. You know, it's a great way. There's, there's a pastor on there that has 12 million followers. And, um, or maybe that's on Periscope, but it's a live streaming mm -hmm. technology. It is the way of the future. Live streaming is the way of the future. Facebook someday will be old technology and we'll all be working on live streaming. But what Facebook did is about the same time they opened in the dark web, they introduced Facebook Live. Then they introduced Facebook Money Transfer. If your kid plays um, uh, 
video games, they use bitcoins. If they play World of Warcraft, they use WoW Gold. But there are 600 and some cyber currencies out there that are being used. Hmm. Now, cyber currency is internet money. It's not backed by gold standards. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of fraud in it. Uh, there's something called the Silk Road where they, they made off. It was a cyber currency holder that made off with a lot of the money. So it's unregulated money. But the good part about it for people who want to use it nefariously, let's say, is that it's not traceable and it's totally anonymous mm -hmm. and it's not backed by anything. So, you know, there's been a lot of talk on an investment point of view from banks and people like that. You know, will this replace the U.S. dollar if the U.S. dollar crashes and like that? But when you mix this together with the fact that Facebook is now in the dark web, with their own cyber currency and live streaming, it conjures up a whole lot of possibilities that mm. are really a concern. Think about this. Right now, if you're running into prostitution, you're advertising on web pages uh, all across. There's a lot of them are very pornographic, but there's a variety of web pages where prostitution is uh, advertised. Why pay somebody to advertise for you if you can operate your own program in the dark web and get your own clients through live streaming? Cut out the middleman. Yeah, absolutely. How about child pornography? You know, instead of having a ring of 27,000 people, you'll be able to set in there and sell child pornography or regular pornography. You know, literally, there's something called camming that most people don't know about. Teenagers are sitting in their bedroom and they're taking their their photos, naked photos, and they're making them their own pornographic film. They're giving them to the boyfriend who's selling them at school with bitcoins, mm -hmm. and the kid next door is buying the, the cheerleaders camming her, her pornography with his World of Warcraft account. Mm -hmm. Okay, So that's already capable now, but suppose those photos are in the dark web on your own Facebook mm -hmm. account. You blast out and get thousands of people, and you can charge for it. This makes it very difficult for law enforcement because I work with law enforcement. I see how this works. It's getting very difficult to, to uh, be able to prove these crimes because think about this a minute. Uh, you know, in fact, I run a Facebook page called Million Kids on Facebook and, you know, people will follow. We post new cases of child sex trafficking about every three or four hours. And people will come on there and they'll say, well, he only got like four years. He only got eight years for that. Well, how do you make a case for law enforcement? In, in sex trafficking, oftentimes the victim is so violated or so fearful of her own life or the life of her family maybe being killed that they won't testify. So if they don't testify and you're starting to see this big discussion about encrypted phones and how much can law enforcement decode, mm -hmm. and the same way out in California, we're having restricted search and seizure laws, now we won't be able to track the money how do you ever build a case? How do yeah. you even get four years or six years or eight years? You know, I know that you're disappointed now in what it is, but what happens when you can't track the money? So here you are in the dark web and you, you have uh, an ability to reach thousands of people into the dark web and charge the money. So I was quite disturbed about that. I live in this world and it takes a lot to get to me, but that was starting to get to me when I saw a, a fourth technology that really concerns me. And this is from the Consumer Electronics Show in January. And it's called uh, Virtual Reality Pornography. Yep, yep, yep. And I read a review of a guy who was at that consumer show. He said he was uh, married for 30 years. Uh, he had never cheated. They just did the normal stuff in bed, you know. And he said he went in and tried this virtual reality pornography out. And he said, in five minutes, I was doing stuff with three people I will never admit to a soul. And he said, it seared on my heart for nearly a month. I could not get it out of my brain. You know, I felt dirty. I couldn't process it. And I thought to myself, who makes virtual reality now? Video game makers mm -hmm. that our kids are using. And they're already using animated pornography in these games. Now, if you're a parent out there and your child is on a video game and you're not setting with your child, you probably ought to because the same child you would never allow them to read a Playboy magazine, you're probably buying them the game that has this pornography on it. So start to look at that. In fact, I, I want to share with you a quick little story of a kid that I met. It was great. I was talking about video games and animated sex and I show a picture of one of the big games that's advertised.
And uh, this kid was about 13. He was cute. He came up to me and he said, Miss Singleton, this game is really, really raunchy. And I said, really? I said, are you playing this game? Because she's supposed to be 18, you know? Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah. And I said, do you play that every night? And he goes, yeah. And I said, well, are you addicted to it? And he goes, I don't know. And I said, well, are you giving it up? And he goes, I don't think so. <laughs> and I said, well, then you're addicted. And he goes, yeah, well, it's really raunchy. <laughs> you know? And this 13-year-old kid is standing there. I mean, think about this. This is going to be a man in five years. Yeah. He's standing there looking at me going, you know, I'm addicted to this game, but I can't stop it. Mm -hmm. You know, and what do I do about it? And I'm thinking, you're giving that to a 13-year-old child who's doing it two, three, four hours a night. Right. And then he's going to be, it won't be too long till he's having kids. Yeah. What kind of mind have we just raised? Well, and, or, or how has it been modified? Because scientists yeah. have found that the chemicals that your brain releases when you're watching pornography are uh, the same ones that right. are released when you take cocaine. It's addictive. Yeah. And it literally literally rewires the physiology yes. of the human brain. It changes right. the brain. So yeah. you, yes, it, it's not a mind that's no yeah. longer in, under the control of how the parents are shaping it. It's yeah. being literally reshaped through the imagery that they're right. absorbing through these games. Right. And then when you think about this virtual reality where you're living and breathing as if it's real and they're advancing it, and then you put that in a game where they need the group's approval. Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing where we're headed, I, I think is just downright scary. We must get involved with our kids. I mean, I, the reason I wrote my book, the reason me and kids exist, first of all, is never again, you know, never again. You sit with a parent of a kid, you know, and, and it's guys and girls that get violated. I had a case this last week. He was a football player in one of our biggest high schools, mm. you know, and he had, she had sent a photo and he had sent a photo and now they wanted to meet up at one o'clock in the morning. And fortunately, the kid trusted his mother enough to tell him and they came and talked to him and I said, you're not talking to a girl. You're talking to a guy. Mm. You're looking at a guy who's trying to violate you and, and you get this with girls too and, and I'm telling you that I see this technology and it's and it's uh, really getting psychologically invasive you know um, we were talking earlier about the concept of uh, from a biblical point of view that uh, you know I, I have this phrase that they laid their children at the altar of other gods and when I look at the fact that you're going to allow your child to operate in the dark web and then be able to take on virtual reality pornography I cannot imagine that isn't laying your child at the altar of another God. And, and I look at this and I think, this has just begun. Mm -hmm. These are the first years of technology. And I believe that it might be the greatest mission a parent can take on is to help their child develop into leadership that can set the stage for years to come of future generations is to be able to talk to them and sit down and say, you know, I know all the kids have these games and I don't want you to be a weirdo. But I also, let's talk about what's really happening here because I want you to be a man of God. You know, I don't, I don't want you to be a person who's addicted to, you know, animated or virtual pornography with the belief that as long as it's not real, then it doesn't count. Mm. Because, you know, let's talk about sin on the Internet. Sin on the Internet is still sin. I, I did a survey at a church in Southern California. One fourth of the youth group said sin on the Internet's not sin because it's not real. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a verse in the Bible that was written long before technology came on. That's that right. Yeah. said that if you think it, it's real. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you and lust after another woman, you've already committed adultery. There yeah. you go. And right. it doesn't matter if you're doing that in virtual right. reality or animated or in in reality. And so this is what the book is all about. And and uh, I really believe with all my heart that this is one of the most important missions of this decade mm. is to understand what is taking place within our society. It's kind of an interesting thing. It's kind of like the old uh, deal that happened. Some of your readers have probably or viewers have probably heard this, that if you put a, pot, a frog in a in a 
boiling water and and uh, drop it in it'll die but if you just bring it up slowly you know and that's what's happening yeah we're, we're a frog in a pot of boiling water this mm -hmm. stuff is seeping up from the earth almost mm -hmm. you know and it's all around us and we keep going well everybody's got one and, and everybody's doing that and you know always on that thing again and i'm saying we need to stop mm -hmm. and come to attention now i believe this makes a major opportunity for a church and church leadership. I mean, I believe this is a, a church ministry like you can't believe um, because the church is the family of God. These people need forgiveness. They need salvation. They need to both bring their young people in and talk the truth with them. You know, youth groups need to sit down and talk about pornography because it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's not going to go away just because we don't mention it. They're already seeing it. Mm -hmm. We need a biblical perspective on it. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that churches can, you know, understand the needs of our young people and begin to create programs where they can sit down and talk about the honesty mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. I also think that it's important that you stay current. And this is one of the reasons that I developed a program called Exploited. Uh, crimes Against Humanity. And that program, you can see about that at millionkids.org or Million Kids uh, Facebook page. And it basically will be a weekly radio program that will update you on the technologies mm -hmm. each week. And um, it'll air at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. starting May 26. It's every Thursday. But you don't have to, you don't have to uh, see it while it's live. You can archive that at your church. You can archive that, by the way, at your, at your corporation, mm -hmm. if you own a corporation. Uh, or sorority or seroptimist or any place you want to archive it to train your members. And it'll be right on there, the latest technology, mm. so that you can stay current too. There'll be about um, 11 minutes long each week and okay. it'll have all the new technology. So that's called Exploited Crimes Against Humanity and, it, and you can see it at the meandkids.org site. But this is a fascinating thing that's happening and it's happening right as we speak. Mm. And when you see, it's, it's like closing it around you how quick your life is changing. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. more about some of the specific technologies that uh, predators are using as we discuss the four new technologies just since the beginning of this year that are revolutionizing the access that predators have to our children. And I'll tell you in just a minute what major company you probably have already guessed that invested $2 billion in virtual reality technology when we come back as Skywatch TV continues. Save nearly half off the cover price when you subscribe now to the brand new Skywatch TV magazine. For a limited time from April 24th through June 24th, 60 days only, a five-year subscription to Skywatch TV magazine is just $99. That's more than $75 off the cover price, which is like getting two years for free. Exclusive content, articles on prophecy, discovery in the supernatural from Tom Horn, Chris Putnam, Josh Peck, science updates from Sharon K. Gilbert, geopolitics from yours truly, and guest writers like Pulitzer Prize nominated journalist Troy Anderson, renowned Bible scholar Dr. Michael Heiser, Pentagon advisor Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis, and more. But there is more. As an early subscriber, you'll be the first to get this new book from Defender Publishing. I predict what 12 global experts believe you'll see by 2025. This is a $20 value and includes best-selling authors like Joel Richardson, Mark Biltz, Carl Gallops, Tom Horn, Paul McGuire, and more. Find out what they think about the coming war between ISIS and the Vatican, the future of the Temple Mount, and the Ark of the Covenant a worldwide manifestation of angels and the coming age of human hybrids. And we'll also add this DVD, the best of Skywatch TV 2015, a $25 value, including our most compelling interviews from last year, including Chuck Missler, Steve Quayle, the discussion of the Georgia Guidestones with Chris Pinto, and more. All of this together worth more than $200, yours now for just $99, but only through June 24th. Subscribe now, Skywatch TV Magazine. Just call the number on your screen or log on to skywatchtvstore.com. This is Skywatch TV, I'm Derek Gilbert. Don't forget to check out the website for exclusive online content programs like Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck and Sci Friday as Sharon Gilbert and I explore the world of science. Um, we're talking with Opal Singleton, who is the president and CEO of MillionKids.org and the author of the book, Seduced, The Grooming of America's Teenagers. As you probably guessed, Facebook invested $2 billion in purchasing a company called Oculus Rift, which is a virtual reality headset. They did that two years ago. Wow. And they followed this year by launching their live streaming service, yeah. their 
money transfer based on blockchain technology, which is a Bitcoin untraceable yes. digital currency, right. and of course launch their website on the dark web. All the pieces fit together. Right. There are analysts who are looking at this Facebook purchase of Oculus Rift and yeah. saying, they spent $2 billion on, on yeah. this. How are they going to recoup their money? Facebook, we think of as just this website where you share pictures of your family back and forth and funny uh -huh. little meme posters with your friends. Yeah. Why did they invest $2 billion in a virtual reality headset? And most of the analysts say, well, they're probably going to make it back through virtual pornography, virtual reality porn. Especially if they're in the dark web. Especially if they're on the dark web. This is wow. astonishing and all of these pieces are fitting together. In, in fact, as you're talking and you were describing Facebook's money transfer program, I'm thinking now looking at finance, which I do on a daily basis for mm -hmm. the daily news updates and seeing that recently a group of Wall Street executives and major corporate executives, a number of bankers and investment bankers got together for a demonstration by a company that wants to launch a new blockchain technology, a rival to Bitcoin and these other 600 plus cyber currencies right. because they want to be able to transfer money faster when they're trading back and forth. But I right. suspect it also has to do with the government realizing that they're losing control of being able to track yeah. purchases. Uh, but it seems to me that it may also be that the government and these big bankers like Facebook want to right. get a piece of this dark web pie. You are so right. You know, the Internet basically means there are no borders. Yes. And that's true, by the way, when you let your child onto the Internet, they are going to meet people all around the world and not all on the gray. Yeah. But, uh, you know, where this is headed, this combination of events is very scary. I think that the key to this now is that, you know, technology isn't good or bad. Uh, it's no different than when they introduced cars or they introduced alcohol or they had guns. You know, it's how you talk to your child and how, what kind of adults they become in the handling of it. The scary part about all of this stuff in the dark web with, with uh, pornography is that you know, it isn't like you're trying to get your child just to do this act or that act. It's tearing at the soul, the very core of their beliefs. And it is that very factor, and, and it's do, being done in a fantasy world where they believe that it's okay because it's not real. Mm -hmm. It's that very factor where I believe that we need to stop. It, it kind of reminds me of when people bowed down to Baal. You know, and we're all going, well, we can't we can't take our kids out of this world because everybody's doing it. I don't recommend taking your kids out of the world, but I do believe that God is still alive and he is counting on us as leadership to educate our young people to be able to create a Christian community. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talk all about the end of the world and Armageddon and that kind of thing. But, you know, in our own homes, we need to be able to talk to our own kids because this has become um, very dark and we've just begun. You know, we're not able to even perceive. I think that, I think even five years ago, if you would have said, okay, you would buy your kid a game. I often talk about this with Grand Theft Auto. You know, you would never take your child to a prostitute. However, you buy that same child a game and walk by it while they're having sex with the prostitute and look the other way. And I think that even five years ago, if you had said to the average family, you know, in five years, you're going to buy your 13 year old son a game where he can pay real money to have virtual sex with a prostitute in your living room mm -hmm. while you watch. Mm -hmm. And you would go, no, I won't. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, I hear when girls get violated and in, in, uh, prostitution, they say, well, you know, I reach a point where I said, okay, I'll do this, but I won't do that. And then pretty soon, well, okay, I'll do this, but I won't do that. And, well, okay, well, you know, and pretty soon there is no bottom line. Right. And I think as a parent, we need to stop and say, what is the bottom line for my family mm -hmm. and for who we are and what we are raising our kids to believe? Yeah. There, there's yeah. the old joke about, uh, wealthy man who uh, propositions a waitress and says, you know, would you uh, sleep with me for a million dollars? And yeah. she said, oh, yeah, sure. Okay, well, how about, uh, you know, a hundred bucks? She said, well, yeah. what kind of girl do you think I am? <laughs> and the answer is, we've already yeah. established that. Now we're just determining the price. That's right. And we've established a morality 
for uh-huh. our children in, in this nation. That's right. That is essentially on that slope. We've not set any absolutes, and I think we need to get back to some absolutes. Yeah. You know, there are certain things that are right and wrong. And as you pointed out, a quarter of the kids in the church survey that you took right. thought that virtual sin wasn't really sin because it's not real. Even though Jesus tells us, right. if you look at a woman and desire her, you have already committed adultery. It's not right. like adultery. It's not a, uh, a metaphor for adultery. It is yeah. adultery. And we as parents have failed to teach our children that. That's right. And there, there's another factor involved in this. Most of these games you can't get unless the parent buys because right. they have an age. 18 plus. But for whatever reason on the games, parents don't pay any attention to that. But what is happening is psychologically the kids call well, it must be okay. Mom and dad bought it for me. Yeah. You know? And so then how do you come in and go, what are you doing on that? You know? Well, hey, you bought it for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to, to put that responsibility back in there and take a look. Let me ask uh, like one final question here because we've kind of gone on to the, uh, the aspect of morality here. Mm-hmm. But um, the thing that, that is really important about your work is that there are kids who are lured into this behavior and then this behavior is used almost like a spiritual jujitsu move to turn their actions against them and then draw them into further behavior, whether it's pornography, uh, prostitution or what have you. How many children in America estimated are a part of this? How big is this problem? Well, I will honestly tell you that nobody can really quantify this right now. Uh, it is estimated the, that three, by the Department of Justice that 300,000 kids end up in being lured into prostitution. But those are old numbers. Uh, you know, these are numbers that are being reported. The concept of a human trafficking task force is a relatively new concept, like two to three to four years old. Hmm. So they're just starting to put that together. But what they're tracking is the kids who are actually sold into prostitution. What they're not able to track is how many kids get a photo out there that are being blackmailed. Mm-hmm. How many kids go out and do a meetup where they're raped uh, and they don't report? Mm-hmm. And so we don't know, but I can tell you that our task force has 130 open cases and we're a fairly, uh, you know, we're a rural community, not completely. We're outside of LA. But, uh, but you know, I got eight, eight leads the week before just from, you know, and some were girls and some were guys. Hmm. You know, a guy gets lured in on a photo or a girl did a meetup. Uh, I run a missing kids program out in California. We've got one right now where she snuck off and met up with this guy and nobody's seen her since. Usually what happens, and I, and I should mention that so parents understand it, is that what will happen is she'll meet this guy and he'll, and so mom and dad are down there doing this missing persons report. But within an hour, he'll take her to another county. Opal Singleton is the president and CEO of MillionKids.org. She's the author of the book, Seduced the Grooming of America's Teenagers. And you can get this book right now. We recommend it. And we are adding as an incentive to the book, the Survive the Unthinkable, the ultimate guide to women's self-protection. And uh, we will add a uh, lovely journal for a mom to record her thoughts, her dreams, her aspirations for children and grandchildren. This is a $20 value alone. All three together, a $50 value. Yours for $29.99 when you order through the Skywatch TV store. Call the number on your screen or log on to skywatchtvstore.com. Uh, Opal, your work is um, sadly much needed, yeah. and uh, we do appreciate it. We thank you very much for your time. You've been amazing. Thank you so much. And we thank you for watching while we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.